Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the first of all, James chapter number five. Read the verse number sixteen through eighteen. Man. James five, sixteen through eighteen. And Acts chapter six, verse number four. Very very, very quote a common quote of scriptures. Every time I preach on prayer, usually I've used Acts five. Uh, you know, especially here, this first one, Acts 5, I use it very, very often when I preach on prayer. Most of the time when I preach on prayer, it's kind of hard not to uh, go to James 5 yeah, when you preach on prayer. Amen. Uh, James 5 and 16 says, James 5 and verse number 16, confess, uh, confess your faults one to another, pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed and he prayed earnestly that the uh, that it it not uh, the he prayed earnestly uh, uh, that it might not rain, and it rained uh, rain not on the earth for the space of three uh, three years and six months again, and the heaven gave rain, and uh, the fruit of the earth brought forth her, uh, her fruit. Amen. And if you would turn with me to Acts chapter number 6, verse number 4, Acts 6 and 4. Acts 6 and 4, and it says here, Get my Bible open to it. Acts six and four says, "I'm trying to get to, it, but, but, uh, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word." If you would just pray with me, Lord, I thank you for bringing us here. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to anoint my lips of clay, Lord, for without your anointing, I can do nothing, God. But we know by that anointing that all things are possible. God, speak today as only you are able to do, Lord. Lord, uh, Lord, help us to be, pr- uh, help us to pray as they did in the early church, Lord. Ask it all in your name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. I've been preached to you tonight. I've been, ta- I started talking to you and I mentioned to you several, for the last several weeks about the being the militant church. I preached to you Sunday, both services about this. But I want to preach to you tonight on militant in our prayer lives. Amen. Our extreme in our prayer lives. Amen. We must give ourselves over to prayer. You'll read about the early church. Amen. The church of the book of Acts. They was extreme in their prayer life. Their whole lives were giving over to uh, to prayer and to seek God, and that's where uh, that's what we must do. Amen. I've been quoting Leonard Ravenhill a lot. Amen. And this, Amen. But he said this, Amen. And it's just something that uh, is something that stuck with me. I was just looking for some quotes a while ago before church. He said, "At the judgment seat of Christ, the most embarrassing thing to the believer, we, uh, the believer will face, will be his smallness of his, uh, the small." of his praying. Amen. Will amen. Will we t- look at everything else important in the end? Amen. When will we stand before the judgment seat of Christ? Amen. All the time that we spend on everything else will not matter. Amen. The only thing that's going to matter, amen, is how amen that we was obedient unto him. Amen. That we loved him as obedient unto him and that we sought his face. Amen. Will we actually ever go to God and he said, you prayed entirely too much. Absolutely not. God will never use such terminology that we prayed entirely too much. Amen. Our lives must be given over to prayer. Amen. Prayer is not some formula. Amen. It's not a formula that we do. Sure, the Lord, they, they said, teach us to pray. He told, He gave them the amen to prayer. The uh, most call the Lord's prayer. Amen. Uh, he told them, amen, a pattern to pray in. Does that mean that we pray in the exact words every single time? No. He was just giving us, amen, an example on how we are to pray. Amen. And it's not a formula. Prayer is not twisting God's arm. Amen. The early church didn't think they was twisting God's arm. Prayer. Amen. As we pray, we're not praying to a genie in a bottle. Amen. It's not a time when we pray. It's not a time to go rub a lamp. Amen. And God come out and say you get three 
wishes in the time that we get intimate with God. We have sweet fellowship with Him. Amen. Of course, we can ask of God and God does hear our prayer and I do believe God answers our prayer. But it's not going to be the way we want it every single time. It's not going to be according to the flesh, but it's going to be according to Him and His will. Amen. This is what prayer is. Amen. You'll read the early church of the early church. When the early church prayed, they truly sought God. Amen. They sought to have a fellowship with God. Amen. That's the main purpose of prayer. The main purpose of prayer is not just asking God for things, but it is that we will know Him. Amen. That we will know Him and everything He would have us to know about Him. Amen. Of course, we know His mind when we read His Word. But amen, through prayer, God speaks to me through His Word. Amen. We we must have this prayer life. We must be militant in this prayer life. Amen. I do believe, God, amen, none of us, amen, I, I do believe we, most of us probably will fall short of what the early church did in their prayer life. Amen. I, I mentioned, I had mentioned to you, amen, in the 28 chapters of the book of Acts, amen, prayer, amen, there was some prayer, praying, Prayeth our, our prayers. Amen. Uh, one of them words. Th- uh, th- uh, 35 times in the 28 chapters of the book of Acts. More than one time for every chapter. And, and it's not exactly in every chapter. But probably th- over three quarters of every, of every chapter in the book of Acts. Says something about praying. Amen. That, must, that will show us the importance of prayer. That will show us the importance the early church put on prayer. Amen. Leonard Ravenhill, amen. Now, he wasn't in the book of church of the book of Acts, but Leonard Ravenhill, and the one I've been quoting, prayed for eight hours every single day. His wife said he prayed more than he slept. Amen. What a time that he had in prayer. Amen. Amen. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth. Amen. One of the great, amen, great Pentecostal preachers of the past. Amen. Said, I rarely pray for more than 15 minutes, but I rarely go more than 15 minutes without praying. Can we truly say that? That we rarely go 15 minutes without praying. We must have this prayer life. Amen. As it was in the book of Acts. We must do so today. There's so many excuses. Amen. That we use for not praying. Amen. Amen. You'll see this modern church. Amen. The modern way that prayer takes a back burner to other things. Amen. For private and corporate prayer. We're going to talk about both of them tonight. Amen. There is a, there is a place for both. Amen. Private prayer. Amen. I've told you often before. Private prayer, amen, is not any less important, amen, than corporate prayer. And I don't believe even more important than corporate prayer. I do believe they both hold their place in the church. You read the book of Acts, there was private prayer time and there was corporate prayer time. And we need both of them to function as a church. Amen. We're going, amen. I, I am preaching about this militant church, what they did in the book of Acts. If we're truly ever to see revival, it's going to happen just the way that it's always happened. It's going to happen, amen, no different than it did for that early church. Amen. This early church was a praying church. Amen. First of all, amen, they did have private prayer. I do believe they sought God alone. But Jesus t- uh, commanded them to go tarry in Jerusalem till they be endued with power from on high in the upper room. Amen. In this upper room, they corporately came together to seek the face of God. Amen. There's so many excuses. Amen. Why we don't have private? We don't have private prayer time and corporate prayer time. Amen. Amen. So many excuses not to pray. Amen. We should never make excuses now not to pray and seek God alone. But we also should never make excuses when it is corporate prayers called not to attend corporate prayer. Amen. Amen. That excuses. Amen. We'll never hold water with God. Amen. It does to say I'm too busy. Amen. You are. You should never to be, be too busy to pray. If you're too busy to pray, you're entirely too busy. If you're too busy to ever attend corporate 
prayer meeting, you're entirely too busy. Amen. Somebody that's too busy to pray is too busy for God. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm, a, I'm busy, but I'm going to tell you, I find time to, see, uh, to spend time with my wife. Why? Because I love my wife. I make time to spend with her. Amen. Every single chance I get, I spend with my wife. Amen. If I truly love God, if I'm intimate with Him, amen, if He is my all, and I truly want fellowship with God, amen, I'm going to make time to have private Prayer time with Him. Amen. But not only private prayer time. I'm going to make time to get with my brothers and sisters in Christ and seek the face of God. Amen. You cannot ever to be too busy for prayer. Amen. Amen. I don't amen to say amen too busy or don't have time. Amen. You always have time for prayer. Amen. Too time, too tired to pray. Amen. Or I got up late. Amen. Or God knows that I need sleep. Amen. It's sleep. Sleep comes in the way of prayer. Sleep has become your God. Amen. And we must beware of this. Amen. I like, amen, I don't necessarily like to sleep. Amen. But I've got to sleep just like everybody else. But amen, if I'll let sleep get in my way, amen, from prayer, amen, I'll let put sleep over God. Amen. If I let my job get in the way of praying, I put my job before God. If I let my hobbies get in the way of prayer, I put my hobbies before God. Even if I put my own wife before seeking the face of God. Amen. I put my man, I put my wife over God, and I never want to do so. Amen. Amen. Men are too lazy. Amen. I mentioned it. Amen. Sunday morning. Amen. About this modern church. Amen. It's come too lazy to pray. Amen. It's what it all is. Amen. Is excuses. And these excuses will not matter in the end. God's not going to accept excuses. Excuses not to pray. Amen. Amen. You can try to justify it to yourself. Amen. But you'll never justify it before God. Amen. God knows your heart. He knows all. He sees all. Amen. And He will not take any excuses in the end. Amen. We must be well, We must be a praying church. Amen. I read to you in James 5. It says the effectual fervent prayer. Amen. I do believe. Amen. Uh, amen. Prayer can be a Effectual. It can make an effect. Amen. I do believe God does hear the prayer of His people. Amen. We must, first of all, must cry out to Him with a pure heart. Amen. We must fervently call out to Him. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Is God going to accept our half-hearted prayer? Never. Amen. We must seek Him with our whole heart. Amen. Amen. When prayer time comes, we must put our mind. Amen. Put our mind upon God and seek His face. Amen. Amen. This fervent prayer. Amen. It's going to take prudence. Amen. We must prudently seek the face of God. You'll read, Amen, in Luke chapter 18, verse number 1 through verse number 8, about this widow, a widow, and the unjust judge. Amen. What did he say? He said, And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saying. Amen. And shall God avenge his own elect, which to cry day and night unto him, through uh, though he bear long with them. I tell Tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Amen. As this widow woman, they may come before this unjust judge and say, Lord, avenge me of my adversary. Amen. No, this no way is calling the God, uh, the Lord, unjust. Amen. It's, just, it's a parable to bring an example to us that we must call upon him in prudence. Amen. With our whole heart, seek Him on a daily basis and call upon Him continually if we're going to see a revival. Amen. If we're going to see God move on our behalf. Amen. Amen. I do believe, amen, the reason we don't see revival is because we don't do as that early church does. Amen. Amen. What did they do? Amen. Jesus told them to go tarry in Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high. 
If they would have left, amen, that ninth day, amen, or even two minutes before the Holy Ghost fell, they wouldn't have seen revival. Amen. There was there was more. I think there was 500. Amen. At the beginning. Amen. And 120 at the end. Amen. There was uh, there was. Amen. 380. Amen. That wasn't prudent. There were 380 that wasn't willing to stay and seek the face of God. That 120 had to stay prudent. That 120 had to stay faithful. That 120 had to seek the face of God. If we're the, we expect to see true revival, we're going to have to be. Be willing to call upon God and seek His face till we see revival. Amen. I do believe God expects a man to work. Amen. Amen. But wait, man, and we'll get to more. Amen. In a moment of prayer. But He said pray without ceasing and we'll get to more of that in a moment. But we must be willing to seek Him with our whole heart. Amen. And seek Him long. Amen. I do believe we must seek Him. Amen. Prudently, as this woman with the unjust judge come to him, uh, come to the unjust judge daily. Amen. Avenge me of my adversary. Amen. She said that. He said, "No, he we're, she weird me." Amen. Because she weird me, I will avenge her. Amen. I do believe. Amen. We're not weary in God, but I do believe if we'll consistently call upon God, God will answer our prayer. Amen. And the church must consistently call upon God. For your lost loved ones. Amen. You say, I prayed a thousand prayers for my lost loved ones. I prayed a thousand prayers for revival. Amen. We'll pray a thousand more prayers. Pray until the answer comes. Amen. If we're going to be that early church, we're going to have to do what they did to see revival. Amen. We're going to have to consistently go to Him. Amen. In faithfulness and call out to God for revival. Amen. We must draw nigh to God. Amen. How are we going to draw nigh to God? Amen. I do believe this is all. Amen. How they did in the uh, in the book of Acts. Amen. I do believe these men had a close walk with God. Amen. In a close relationship with God, and you will see. Amen. What these men, uh, 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 what these men did for God. Amen. We may. Amen. The only way we're ever going to do anything for God is we're intimate with God. Amen. We have that relationship relationship with God. We have that sweet fellowship with Him. Amen. The only way we're going to get the mind of God is that sweet fellowship. Amen. I do believe this Word of God is the mind of God. But the only way we're truly ever going to get Amen with that God to understand the mind of God is that we're intimate with Him. Amen. We have that sweet fellowship with Him. Amen. That's what these men done to the church of old Amen. This early church. Amen. The first century church did. They had that relationship with Him. He said, draw out of me and I'll draw out of you. Amen. How that is a condition. If we're going to be not of God, we must first draw nigh unto Him. If He's going to draw nigh to us and answer our prayers, it's going to be by first with us drawing nigh unto Him. Amen. We must be extreme in this matter. Amen. We must call upon God and have that relationship. Amen. Husband and wife. As you seek that relationship. Amen. As you should. Amen. With that husband or wife. Amen. You should do. Amen. Even more for that relationship with God. Amen. My relationship with my wife is vital to me. I love, as I said, I love spending time with her. I love that relationship. Amen. I love Look forward to after church. Amen. Going to see my wife. Amen. But I'm going to tell you. Amen. Amen. And that there must be even more with God. Our longing must be to spend time. Amen. With Him. To have sweet fellowship with Him. And draw nigh unto Him. Amen. But if we're not willing to draw nigh to Him. He's not going to draw nigh unto us. Amen. If we're not willing to draw nigh to Him. Is He ever going to show His glory to us? truly. Amen. Amen. I want to be as Moses as I pray. Lord, show me thy glory that God truly does. Why? Amen. Because I love him and amen and had that sweet fellowship 
with Him. Amen. We must be willing to draw an eye unto Him if we're going to see God move in true revival. Amen. It's going to take that closeness with God. Amen. To see revival. Amen. Look at such men. Amen. As the, the first century church. Amen. Even, amen, as I talk about Smith Wigglesworth. Amen. What a, what a relationship this man had with God. John Wesley. Amen. Amen. Some of the great Earl of people of the amen of the early, earlier church, amen, the early church in America. Why did they have so, amen see such a God move in such a way? Amen. It's because they had a close relationship with him. They draw they drew nigh to him, and he drew nigh unto them. If we will draw nigh to God, I do believe he will answer prayer and draw nigh to us. He said, You cry a call upon him secretly. Amen. He will reward you openly. Amen. We must draw unto Him and He will draw nigh unto us. Amen. We must pray in faith. Amen. I do believe, amen, God's desire is to, to work on our behalf. God's desire is to pour out revival upon His church. Amen. I do believe God desires to. But He's waiting on His church to call upon Him. Amen. Amen. We must call upon Him in faith. Amen. I told you all, go. Amen. That praying is not twisting God's arm or He's not a genie in a bottle. Amen. We're not calling upon Him for our... We must not call upon Him for our glory. We must not call upon Him for revival for our glory. But that He may be glorified. Amen. As we call upon Him in faith, I do believe He hears and He will answer. Amen. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to heal of God must believe that He is and that He is the rewarder of him that diligently seek Him. And we must have faith that God is going to reward them that diligently seek Him. We must have faith that God is going to answer the prayer for true revival to be poured out. We must believe God and trust God that He is able to save our loved ones from their sins. We must believe and trust God that He's going to anoint us to preach this gospel. We must believe and trust God that He's going to be glorified through the amen, the, uh, amen, the proclamation of His Word. Amen. We must believe and trust Him as we call upon Him in faith that He is going to do what His Word said He would do. Amen. Amen. We must, amen, pray, amen, have, amen, we must pray through. Amen. I'm going to tell you, amen, there's, uh, that's, this is something that's lost. Amen. As I told you about prudent, amen, and faithful prayer. If we're going to ever touch God, it's going to be through us getting, amen, along with God and praying till we touch His throne. Amen. He said boldly, approach the throne of grace in your time of need, and you shall find help in your time of trouble. Amen. Amen. I think I've got it right. Amen. I might have missed a word or two, but amen. You know, amen, what it says. Amen that we can boldly approach His throne. Amen. We must pray until we reach Him at the throne of God, touch the throne of God. Amen. And God, we, we enter into His presence. Amen. Amen. We must pray without ceasing. Amen. This is something that's not done. As we talked about praying through and faith, being faithful in our prayer. Pray without ceasing. Now, I do believe that this could be twofold. Amen. I do believe this means that we pray until we touch the throne. But not only that, that we constantly stay in a constant state of prayer. I've often told you, amen, something that the Lord has dealt with me about. Amen. As throughout the day, I try to check myself. Amen. And tell to see where my thoughts are, where my meditation is. Amen. If it's on something, amen, besides God, for, a, for any period of time, I must check myself and immediately, amen, retrain my thoughts. Why? Amen. Because if I don't meditate and seek the face of God throughout the day, amen, eventually my thoughts will become my actions. Amen. We must beware of putting our focus too much on things besides the things of God. 
Amen. We must stay in a constant state of prayer. As I clean pools, my amen, I must check my thoughts. Amen. And I must check where my mind is wondering. Amen. And get myself in a state of prayer. Amen. Throughout the day, I have to I have call upon God and talk to Him that I may have that fellowship with Him. Amen. I do believe He seeks this fellowship. Amen. This must be an extreme way. Amen. I do believe... As Paul said, pray without ceasing. I do believe he meant what he said. We can stay in a constant state of prayer. Our lives can be in a constant state of prayer. I believe why Paul was what he was. Amen. It's not that he was a special breed of person. But it's that God used him because that closeness with him. Because he stayed in a constant state of prayer. And the last thing is in sincere prayer. Amen. And I'll talk to you a little bit about it, but I'm going to tell you, we must not just call upon God. We must sincerely touch His throne. We must sincerely talk to Him. Amen. I don't want to just talk to God. Amen. Just to talk to God or pray. Just to pray. I don't want to pray. Amen. Just out of habit, but I want to pray sincerely. Amen. And out of love. I do believe the church of Ephesus were doing a lot of things. Amen. I don't believe even the church, the church of Ephesus is probably even stop praying. Amen. But their problem was they stopped. They left their first love. Amen. If we, amen, we, we can pray. Amen. We can have we can have five hour prayer meetings. But unless we sincerely talk to God and call upon Him with sincerity. Amen. That five hour prayer is going to do nothing for you. Amen. That five hours of time that you're talking, amen, is going to do nothing for you. That five hours of time where you're even weeping will do nothing for you unless you're sincere while you're doing so. Amen. Call upon God, not just out of habit, Call upon God, not just because, not uh, Amen, not just but out of uh, out of duty, but Amen. There is a duty to do so, Amen. We, Amen, and you must, Amen. I said not even out of habit, and this is not habit, but you must plan to pray. If you never plan to pray, Amen, you're not going to pray, Amen. But you call upon God in that time that you plan to pray sincerely, Amen. You call up, Amen. You have a duty to pray. The Bible commands us to pray, Amen. But does that duty the prayer, the prayer, do it sincerely as unto the Lord. Amen. Not unto, as unto men, but as unto the Lord. The Bible says, find every, uh, do everything your head's find to do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not as unto men. Amen. We must seek His face because we love Him and care about Him. Amen. Let's stand to our feet tonight.